Over the past few years, I've made a number of modifications to my bandsaw to improve the performance of the AccuSlice system. The main purpose of these changes was to reduce vibration and therefore get smoother cuts using the AccuSlice system. One of the first changes I made was the addition of these table extensions for the front of my bandsaw table. These are four inch wide by three inch tall pieces of angle iron. They're a quarter inch thick. The top surface is perfectly flush with the top surface of my bandsaw table and they're bolted to the front edge of the bandsaw table. The video describing how these were made uh, is listed in the video which is listed in the uh, description section of this video. The main purpose of these is, number one, to extend the front of the table to give you more support for the AccuSlice system. And also, since they're made out of iron, the magnetic clamps will operate to clamp the AccuSlice system in, in, in place. And that enables you to cut wider boards with the AccuSlice system. The next modification I did to my bandsaw was the addition of these left and right hand extension tables for my bandsaw. And again, the construction of these tables is described in a previous video which is listed in the description section of this video. The main purpose of these extension tables is to reduce vibration on my long rails. These long rails tend to overhang the table by quite a bit and when you put a, a sled on here with a piece of wood uh, you have a lot of weight, the rail can sag and actually more importantly you can have a lot of vibration. So by supporting this rail you eliminate the sag and also reduce the vibration and as a result you get smoother cuts. Recently I've been working with one of our customers in California, Dan Mitchell, who's a luthier, and we're making an automated AccuSlice system for Dan. And in our conversations with Dan, Dan suggested several improvements to the operation of the AccuSlice system. Dan's first suggestion that we'll describe in this video is a modification of the AccuSlice table by adding some ballpoint set screws to raise the AccuSlice table slightly to reduce the friction between the AccuSlice table and the bandsaw table. It was hoped that this modification would improve the accuracy of the AccuSlice system. It also enables the system to slide much more smoothly on the bandsaw table. The second suggestion for Dan was the addition of a second set of magnitude clamps to the AccuSlice table. Dan actually made this change to his AccuSlice system more than a year ago. Again, the concept was to more securely attach the AccuSlice system to the bandsaw table to reduce vibration and give you smoother cuts and we'll demonstrate this modification in this video. The final modification of a bandsaw and the AccuSlice system that I'll show in this video is the addition of some brass standoffs on the ends of the AccuSlice rails. These brass standoffs ride on the surface of the bandsaw table extensions to reduce vibration on the ends of the rails but at the same time provide for minimal surface contact on the table extensions. Again, reducing any additional friction or drag between the extension table surfaces and the rails. Now the AccuSlice table does ride flat on top of the bandsaw table. And we do that to reduce vibration and give you, you know, smoother cuts. But it does create some friction. And you've probably seen underneath your AccuSlice table, you see scratches in the, uh, the aluminum plate as the, you get the uh, you know, any piece of metal or sh sharp edge on the edge of your bandsaw table will cause those scratches. And sometimes even a miter bar might give a, a scratch underneath that. So the question is, if can we raise this table up somehow, have it ride up some sort of bearings, that it rides more smoothly, reduces the friction, and as a result gives you smoother cuts. You know, using a system, you normally you know, mount your front bar, that's your, just your anchor point, and you screw your system in you know, to give you different thicknesses of boards. So if you can reduce that friction on this front plate, you know, will it give you better accuracy? I, I'm not so sure if it will or not. It's something I'll need to try. Uh, we're always pushing that metal, so as long as your weight's evenly distributed, you should get a pretty accurate cut. Normally when I'm cutting boards, when I'm cutting boards like, you know, say I'm two inches thick, I get an accuracy of plus or minus one or two thousandths of an inch. But I'm working on, on this latest video on the uh, automated AccuSlice system. We developed some, we, we uh, cut some boards that were six inches tall, 36 inches long by two and a half inches thick. And I got a variation on that board about between three and four thousandths of an inch. So a little more variation than normal. And the question is, can that be improved by putting some sort of bearings on this plate? When working with Dan, we discussed several ideas. One is trying to get some ball bearings underneath there that would ride more smoothly. Uh, and then the other idea that came up was using some sort of a point bearing. And I think that's probably a better option. And we found these, they're called ballpoint set screws. 
is a quarter inch diameter by half inch long set screw with a poly stainless steel bearing in the base. And if I can drill holes in my table, screw these in, and then adjust the table so it rides just one or two thousandths above my bandsaw table and then rides on these ball bearing surfaces. That should reduce friction for the system and uh, hopefully improves accuracy, which we'll, we'll test out and see. So the first thing to do is to drill holes in my acting slice table, tap those holes and insert these set screws. Now I need to insert at least six of these screws, maybe even more. I need to do at least six, three on each side because the system does write over the miter bar slot. And if I just had two, every time I went over the miter bar slot, you get a, a bump as it did so. So I need to put one set screw out towards the front edge, one in the middle, and then one underneath the rail, uh, right underneath one of the channels. These set screws will stick above the table about a, almost a quarter of an inch. So I can't put it you know, right in the middle of the rail. I've got to put it under, in one of the channels. And that should uh, bypass the, uh, the part that sticks up above the uh, table and enable it to, to work. So I'm going to take this over to my, uh, my uh, mill and I'm going to drill and tap the three holes. I could drill and tap these holes by hand, but I'll get more accurate results if I do it on my mill by uh, accurately drilling the holes and especially tapping on the, uh, the mini mill is much more accurate than doing it by hand and actually faster too. I tried taking the whole system over to my mill to see if I could drill holes, but uh, my table is just too small. So I need to take this table off the AccuSlice system, which is probably better that way I can, uh, I can judge the adjustment of it later. Now I'm only putting these screws in this plate, not in this plate, because this is my anchor plate. So the first thing I do is I, I took the screws out of this indexer, so I remove my indexer. Now I have four screws holding this plate. I need to remove those four screws. Actually, before I do that, I can use this to see how much friction I have. This is what I want to compare. And that's my movement. And you can see these, when I drill these holes here, they're going to go across this miter bar. These two are stay on the table, but these two are on this outside plate. So I think I'm going to actually drill or put eight holes in here. So I have these holes in one inch, and that's four inches. So let me put a hole at two and a half inches. As you can see, I had a jury rig my system to a mount on my table because the AccuSlice table is actually much bigger than my mill table. And I actually had to take the magnets off too in order to clamp it. So I'm actually clamping it through the magnet holes. So I'll be drilling these six, drilling, uh, tapping these six holes and these holes over here. And these outer holes I'll have to turn it around 180 degrees to, to do those. So let me go and do this. And I'm using a number seven drill, which is 0 0.201 inches in diameter. This is a quarter 20 thread per inch tap. In the same manner I drill and tap the holes on the other side of the plate and then I'll reverse the plate 180 degrees and drill and tap the two front holes. Okay, my plate's done now here, so I'm just reattaching it. And I need to realign it because there is a little bit of play here in these screws. And it's important that it's, that it's parallel with the front edge of the miter bar. So I'll get it close here and I'll, uh, I'll readjust it once I get my indexer on. So now we can go and insert our screws. Now on these screws, I'll get them set in and get them set up. But then eventually I'll uh, put some Loctite on them so they don't move. So what I'm doing, I'm using the Loctite. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take each one of these. What I'm doing is unscrewing the pin screw to expose most of the thread, then adding a drop of the Loctite to the threads, and then screwing it back in. And I repeat this procedure for all the ballpoint set screws. So what I have here is a small gap. I can feel it as it goes over there. That's pretty much as good as I'm going to get it, I think. It's pretty hard to make it up. So they let that Loctite dry for about a half an hour. I experimented for a while to determine the optimum height of the ballpoint set screws below the surface of the AccuSlice table. I wanted to get this distance as small as possible. For the final setting, I set this distance to about four thousandths of an inch. I use a small brass bar and a four thousandths inch thick feeler gauge to estimate and set this distance. This was difficult to do since the ballpoint set screws are round, but I was able to adjust all eight of the ballpoint set screws to this four thousandths of an inch depth. I also used the brass bar to ensure that the adjacent set screws were all the same distance. Let me go ahead and put it back together. Let me put the uh, indexer on. I have to reinstall the uh, magnets and I have to uh, to adjust those. They're probably going to be too, probably going to be out of the line. The index is held in place with four screws, which I inserted and uh, screwed tight. After these screws are tightened, I then check for the alignment, making sure that top plate is parallel with the miter bar. I'm going to try it on, so it's really good. It didn't move. I reinstalled the magnets as they were previously installed using the two plates and then screwing the mag jig clamps into those plates. I'll need to readjust the uh, spacers because they're, they're going to be the wrong height now. Since I raised the table slightly, I'm going to have to lower those mag jigs by four thousandths or five thousandths of an inch. Three eight three point three eight three. So let me sand those down just a hair. So I sand it off about five thousandths off each of the spacers, and then reinstalled them back on the AccuSlice table. After reinstalling the mag jig clamps on the table with the shortened spacers, I then test the table to make sure it holds on the table. Now the purpose of the mag jig clamps is to reduce vibration, so it's important they do hold the table steady. Uh, it's, it's mental improvement in, in uh, sliding. I can feel a slight difference. Whether it's enough, I don't know. So let me mount my rail now and make sure it clears these. This is my six foot rail that's on here now. It's good, it clears it nice. So it is those go right in uh, right in this channel here. So those slide inside that channel, it's clear. Okay, for this first test I have this piece of uh, poplar. And it's about 30 inches long, 6 inches wide, and it's mounted on my AccuSled 2 carriage. So I'm going to cut this board, and I'm using a half inch blade, uh, 8 teeth per inch. So let me cut a piece of scrap off first, and I will cut off some 25,000 inch thick pieces. For viewing purposes, this video is sped up 20 times the actual cutting speed. I'm actually cutting quite slowly because the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. After that scrap piece was cut, I then set the indexer to give me a board 25 thousandths of an inch thick. I then repeated the process moving the indexer to cut six more boards, each 25 thousandths of an inch thick. 
Yeah, I got six boards off that. This uh, sixth one may not be a good one, so we'll see how that works. It was right, there, right at the glue line. Five boards here with uh, that range from 25 to 21 and a half. So, like you know, I'm still getting an error of plus or minus two thousandths from board to board, but very parallel from edge to edge. Uh, so, they seem to work a little bit, definitely gives a smoother cut or smoother transition. Uh, can't really say if it improves accuracy or not yet. So I need to do more testing to determine that. Okay, this next board is a piece of maple. Uh, this maple is uh, 4 inches by 36 inches long. Again, it's mounted on my AccuSled 2 carriage. So we'll see what we get out of this. Once again, for viewing purposes, this video is sped up 20 times the actual cutting speed. So first of all, I cut a piece of scrap off the board, and then I turned the indexer one full turn for the curve of the blade, plus another 25 thousandths to give me boards 25 thousandths of an inch thick. And I cut a total of six boards at this setting. Well, I cut six boards on that, and the first three look pretty good. When I get down to the last three, I'm getting more ripple. And maybe that's just from the uh, the guides, the ball bearings on my, my sled getting some sawdust in this channel. Because definitely the, uh, the first two or three are better than the last two or three. You can definitely see the difference. As far as variation, a little bit of variation. That one's 28, just measure along the center. That one's 25. That one's 25. That one's 27. That one's 29. And that one's 27. So we have a variation between uh, 24 thousandths and uh, 29,000. So again, an error of plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. Just to review the results of adding these uh, ballpoint set screws to my AccuSlice table, and I did add eight of these to my index table. Now these ballpoint set screws did reduce the surface area between my AccuSlice system and my bandsaw table. So as a result, the system does slide much more smoothly, smoothly on the bandsaw table. So that was an improvement. But it did not increase the accuracy of the system. I thought it might make the uh, accuracy of the system better, especially when cutting uh, longer and wider boards, but it did not improve that uh, operation. Also, another issue that came up, I, was, I got a lot, lot more rough surface on some of the boards I was cutting, a little more vibration issues, which I think is due to there less being uh, less surface area between my AccuSlice table and my bandsaw table. So as a result of those two issues, I really can't recommend adding these ballpoint set screws at this time. Now the one issue we may be trying, we'll be trying next to reduce that vibration is adding a second set of bag jig clamps. And I'll be doing that in the next section of this video. The other idea that Dad came up with was adding a second set of mag jig clamps to my system. And Dan actually did this to a system oh, more than a year ago. And that the thought was to reduce vibration to make the system more, you know, more firmly attached to the uh, bandsaw table. When I was first developing the AccuSlice system, I didn't have any clamping systems. And I found if I put some C-clamps on the table, uh, I got much better results, I got much smoother cuts. And that's why we added the MagJ clamps. Now I can't add anything bigger than this. These are the 95-pound the, uh, uh, MagJ clamps. And uh, the, I could put the, uh, the larger ones on, the 150-pound systems, but they sit higher and they'd be in the way of my AccuWedge and other and AccuSlot systems. So uh, I, can't, I can't put bigger uh, mag jig clamps on here, but I do have enough room to put two, two on here like this. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me take my carriage off my system, take my rail off the system, and we'll install this 
second set of mag jig clamps. Okay, I just removed my carriage and rail from my system and I loosened my screws so I can move my actually sliced table. Now I have my first set of mag jig clamps and I'm actually going to clamp these as close to the top as possible. So I'm going to actually loosen these and move these all the way to the top. And I'll put the other ones down as close to the bottom as possible. That way I have the, the widest range of clamping. Now the mag jig actually consists of a number of parts. I have a bottom plate which is the holes are tapped and that goes underneath in the channel. And then there's a, a top plate and two spacers. And I'll have to reduce the size of these spacers like I did for the previous one because I did raise the table up a hair. So these just go in there like that and then they screw into that bottom plate. Like I said I'll move this towards the bottom. But it could be put any place in between depending on the size of your extension table. And so now I have two sets of clamps on here. So I just do the same thing for the other one. I can retighten my miter bar. Now if I activate both sets of back chain clamps, I mean that doesn't move at all, that's perfectly perfectly stable. I mean, I can't not move that. Of course, with just one set, you know, I can move it a hair. But with two sets, that doesn't move at all. So that should definitely improve rigidity of the system and reduce vibration. So that's an idea you can put on your bandsaw uh, with, or, with or without these, you know, uh, ballpoint set screws. It'll get, definitely increase the rigidity of your system. But again, you're going to need the extensions on the front of your bandsaw table to do that. The final modification by bandsaw that I'm showing in this video is the addition of some brass standoffs on the ends of my rails. Now on my bandsaw I have these extension tables to give me a longer extension so I can support my rail so it doesn't sag and reduces vibration. And these tables are at the exact same height as my bandsaw table. But my AccuSlice system is actually a quarter inch above the top of my bandsaw table. So as a result these rails have a gap about a quarter inch between the rail and the extension tables. So in the past I used these pieces, quarter inch thick pieces of aluminum underneath the rail to make up that gap. And the whole purpose of this was just to give me more surface contact so the rail doesn't vibrate and ride smoothly on the table. To start out with a long piece, you know, the entire length of the extension, I eventually went to a smaller piece to reduce friction on the table. So the less material in contact with the table, the less friction, the more smoothly it's going to run. So now I've gone to even a smaller standoff, which is a small piece of brass. This is a piece of brass, half inch wide, quarter inch thick. I'd actually even milled away the corners so it's even smaller. So you only have about 3 sixteenths of a piece of metal riding on my extension tables. This drawing shows how these pieces were constructed. They were constructed from a piece of brass, a half inch wide, quarter inch thick by about 4 inches long. And I milled out the top edges and I rounded the corners. And it gives me this resulting piece of brass, which is again four inches long, quarter inch high, with minimal surface area, which will be in contact with the bandsaw extension tables. So that's enough material to reduce the vibration and support the rail, but at the same time get minimal friction. So that should give you a better operation of the system. So it'll slide smoothly on the bandsaw table. I have all the modifications listed at the beginning of this video installed on my AccuSlice system on my bandsaw. That includes the extension tables on the front of the bandsaw, the extension tables on the rear of the bandsaw, the ball screw, set point screws here, two sets of mag jig clamps, and my brass standoffs on the end of the rail. So everything's installed. I have a board here which is a piece of maple, four inches by 30 inches long. So let me do some test cuts on this and we'll see how the system operates with all of these modifications. So in addition I clean my roller bearings so everything's clean. I clean my rail so everything's nice and clean. So 
solution we almost have to cut here. See how smooth of a cut and see what the reproducibility is. Once again, I'm showing this video at 20 times the actual cutting speed just to reduce viewing time. So first of all, I cut off a piece of scrap to give me a flat parallel surface. And then I cut off nine boards, each 25 thousandths of an inch thick. You know, the first cut was just cutting off a piece of scrap wood to get the parallel surface, and then I cut nine more boards off of that. Each of these should be around 25,000 inch thick. And everything seemed to work pretty good. The double mag jig clamps definitely seemed to clamp the system tighter. My standoffs definitely eliminated any vibration at the end of my uh, rails, so that worked good. So let's see what kind of uh, variation we got in thickness of these boards. I'll just measure all these the same point in the middle of the board. 27 thousandths. That's 26 thousandths. That's 27 thousandths. That's 26 thousandths. That's 27 thousandths. That's 28 thousandths. 27 and a half thousandths. And that's 25 thousandths. And that's 27 thousandths. So I got variation between what 20, 25 thousandths is the smallest and what 29 is the thickness, as the thickest piece. So again, uh, plus or minus two thousandths of an inch. About the same as I was seeing before. But the boards are perfectly straight and parallel, one inch to the other. So to conclude the results of all these changes I made to my system, uh, I know I spent quite a bit of time describing the setup of these ballpoint set screws, and they definitely did seem to make the system ride smoother, but it did not improve the accuracy like I thought it would. would. So, uh, and it may result in a little bit more vibration, but with the addition of the uh, second set of mag jig clamps, that seemed to improve. And all these cuts are nice and smooth to get that rough in, even after cutting my uh, ninth board. The knife board is still perfectly smooth on I mean, it. I didn't get that rough edge like I got on the, the previous test. So I think those mag jig, double mag jig clamps did help. All these changes I made to the AccuSlice system and the bandsaw did seem to make some improvements in the system. The ballpoint set screws, you know, de definitely did reduce friction between the table and the bandsaw table. Definitely makes the slide easier, but it did not improve the accuracy. And for that reason, I'm really would not recommend putting these on your bandsaw unless you have a problem with uh, friction on your table. The double mag jig clamps definitely do give you additional holding power and help reduce vibration. Again, that's uh, something you might want to put on your bandsaw in the future. For the offset uh, spacer in my bars, yeah, definitely support the end of the rail so the rail didn't sag. And more importantly, I didn't get any vibration on the end of the rails. So that worked very well. Also, you know, I def definitely would recommend the extension on the front of your bandsaw table. And if you're using a longer rail, you need some sort of support on the end of the uh, rail so to support that rail from sagging and vibrating. So once again, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, you know, please give us a call or drop us an email. We're always happy to hear from you. Once again, thank you for watching this video.